Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Today I will be doing the anti-haul tag. So I will be talking about specific fragrances that I won't be adding to my perfume collection and also fragrance houses where I won't be buying fragrances from. First one is any molecule fragrance or any molecule based fragrances. So as you guys know, I used to own Molecule 01. That was one fragrance that I really wanted to add to my collection because it was that very first fragrance where I really had to ask somebody like what are you wearing it's really nice and I waited like a year or even more than that to ask somebody that I work with so um I did own Molecule 01 I wasn't really the biggest fan of it um I didn't get the same scent of course it's different with molecule based fragrances it depends on your body chemistry or your skin chemistry so it can smell different to each and every single one but um on me i really couldn't smell it and when i did it wasn't really a scent that i enjoyed and for me personally i prefer fragrances that i can smell throughout the whole day or even fragrances that i can smell period so any molecule based fragrances i will not be adding to my collection based on that experience um some fragrances from Juliet has a gun has a molecule based fragrances zarko is a danish a perfume house that i really wanted danish I think so it's a Danish perfume house that I really wanted to explore because we have that here um, some of their fragrances are available in our website but um, yeah I'm kind of scared to add or try any other molecule based fragrances and given the experience that I have and also the price that most molecule fragrances go number for. two is hypnotic poison and I'm talking about the EDT and the EDP version so that is one fragrance that I really wanted to add to my collection really wanted to love honestly because a lot of people have been talking about it and I do hear a lot of good things about it some people don't really like the play doughy smell that they get from the hypnotic poison but um for me, I'm not going to be adding it to my collection because I, it's just one of those fragrances that I don't understand because I can't smell anything. So I did try to play around with the EDT and the EDP version. Every time I go to the store, I test Hypnotic Poison out both um, formulations. And at one point, I did smell that creamy almond that everyone's talking about. And I think that's more in the EDP version. Um... I almost bought it that time but I just decided to you know just wait on it and just try it more and this, the following times that I did try it I didn't really like the scent um, I didn't get anything from it actually I wish I got even just a play doughy scent that it most people get but even that I didn't I didn't even smell that so um, hypnotic poison both the EDT and the EDP I will not be adding to my collection and another uh, fragrance from Dior would be Poison Girl. So I did post in my community tab or community page before that I was able to smell Poison Girl, both the EDT and the EDP. And I think it was the EDP that I tested out first. And I was like, oh my God, it's really nice. I really love the entrance. It's caramelly. It's very sweet. And I get the orange blossom. And it was like very nice. And one time when I was buying... Um, Ralph Lauren's uh, Romance, I just, just decided, okay, I'm just going to do a haul. I will buy Poison Girl. It was fixed on Poison Girl ADP because that was the very first one that I tried. I did try the EDT. It's, it was nice, but it wasn't really as deep as I wanted it to be, just like the EDP or the Eau de Parfum version. So I sprayed it on my skin and I just walked around. And that time, I noticed something weird in the dry downs. I was like, okay, I'm just gonna spray more on a tester strip, spray more on my hand. I'm just gonna wait on it and just go home and think about it. And there was something in the dry down of the EDP that I don't like. Um, I really love the entrance, that caramel and that um, orange in there. In the dry down, it felt like it was something that I've smelled before. Of course, it's gonna be a familiar scent. It will be in a way familiar because it has orange blossom. Most uh, fragrances have orange blossom in them, but there was something in the dry down that I wasn't a fan of. So I tried the EDT. The next time I went to the store, um, sprayed a lot on a tester strip and sprayed it on my hand. And you know, I wasn't really feeling it. So um, sadly, even though I really wanted to, um, I'm not going to be adding Poison Girl, EDT, or the EDP version. And I know a lot of people love that perfume. And that's also one of the reasons why I really wanted to try those perfumes, Hypnotic Poison and Poison Girl, because that those fragrances are usually in people's um, top favorite fragrances or like for top 10 or top 5 for life fragrances or their favorites. So um, 
Another designer fragrance, Versace, and that is Crystal Noir, both the EDP and the EDT version. So I did mention in some comments from other people's videos that I'm not really liking the Crystal Noir um, fragrances. At one point, um, I did get the coconut. I think it was in, in the EDP version because I really wanted to try that fragrance because of the coconut. Because people, that's a lot of because because people describe it as a beautiful coconut fragrance with florals and it's just sexy seductive and it's just and it, and it's like an effortless kind of a fragrance effortlessly sexy kind of a fragrance so i wanted to get that feeling as well so i did try it it was very early on into um, me being on youtube and trying more and more fragrances so um i didn't get the coconut i did at one point get the coconut but then it wasn't really the kind of coconut that I was expecting. So I kept on testing it over and over again, just like what I do with most fragrances, not just with, for example, the Dior fragrances that I mentioned and with this um, specific range, but um, I really wanted to love it because I do love the Bright Crystal and the Yellow Diamond and all of those other fragrances. So I really wanted to enjoy Crystal Noir as well, both formulations. But, you know, I don't know, I just gave up on that line and those um, fragrances because there isn't just something in them that's calling out my name and even though I really wanted to get what people got in it I unfortunately don't get what they mean by it being that kind of a fragrance so another fragrance that belongs to that same category is Victor Noel Flower Bomb so if you guys have been following me ever since I started my perfume channel um, I do talk about Flower Bomb a lot because that was one fragrance that I really, really, really wanted to try and I kept on testing it over and over and over again because Kathleen Lights talked about Flower Bomb and a lot of people, celebrities and you, you know, um, people on YouTube, influencers, even those who just do makeup, they talk about Flower Bomb and everyone loves that fragrance and I was just, you know what, I'm gonna try it and when I first sprayed it like years ago, I didn't really like it. So I was like, nah, nah, nah. So I kept on testing it over and over and over again. Being on YouTube, I keep on hearing about Flower Bomb. So I wanted to try it. I wanted to love it. wanted to buy it. But yeah, after a couple of years, I just gave up on trying to love Flower Bomb because, you know, it was just like, it was, I wasn't really trying to buy the fragrances because everyone loves them. I just wanted to understand why people love these fragrances so much. And it just goes to show that, of course, fragrances are subjective. How we experience them is different. So even though we get the same notes, we get the same um, scent from a fragrance, the experience is different. So um, yeah, Flower Bomb has to be mentioned in my anti-haul. And another one that everyone seems to love so much, I think I belong to the very, very, very few number that um, aren't a fan of this fragrance. It's Dolce & Gabbana, The Only One Intense. So I have heard a lot of people talk about this fragrance last year, and of course I had to sample it. I've seen it in our, uh, in our fragrance department, but that time I was just trying to understand Dolce & Gabbana Parfum and all the other fragrances that I currently owned. So I was like, okay, I've seen that, and I kept on hearing a lot more people talk about it. And I think it was MJ that really talked about that fragrance. She really loved it, and a lot of other um, content creators bought that fragrance as well. So um, yeah, so by the time I tried the fragrance, I sampled it, I didn't get any coconuts. It was like a very similar story to Crystal Noir. Most people talked about the fragrance being a nice tropical floral with the beautiful coconut. So. I did get the coconut in that fragrance, just like with Crystal Noir. I did, I did get the coconut once. The following times that I tested it or smelled it, it was just basically a white floral fragrance, which it is. I mean, when you look up the notes, you see that it has a lot of white florals in there and it has some fruity notes. But for me, it was like a very synthetic, almost green apple synthetic fruity note with some sharp florals. And you know me, I love my synthetic green apple or synthetic fruity scents or anything that's just straight up sweet. But in Dolce & Gabbana, the only one intense, there was something off and I just really wanted to get or experience the fragrance as how other people experience it as well. I really wanted to understand it. It was a nice fragrance as a, you know, fruity white floral fragrance, but not really as a creamy, seductive coconut and just you know that kind of fragrance so it wasn't that kind of a scent for me so 
yeah, I belong to the very few that aren't really a fan of that fragrance. So Dolce & Gabbana, the only one in text. Any black opium, I don't think I will be adding to my collection. Again, it's that story of hearing about black opium, everybody loving it. So me, I just, you know, of course, I, I was got curious, smelled it. It was nice. I mean, people did say that it wasn't really a coffee fragrance. It was a floral fragrance with a coffee note in there. So I smelled it. Not really my kind of thing. So I did try all the other flankers. Neon was one flanker that um, I was given a sample by Kim. I smelled that. It was really nice. It has dragon fruit and all the other notes. It was sweeter, brighter, and it was like a livelier version of black opium. And um, I did try the other flankers as well, the ones that are available here, um, here in Iceland that is. Um, but I, I just, I don't, I don't know, I just don't feel like I have a connection with the Black Opium line. And given the kind of scents or the fragrance or the scent that you get from them with the price range that they go for, of course, understandable, it's YSL, it's high-end designer. So they're, they're quite expensive. So anything from that line, I don't think I'll be adding, not only because they're quite expensive, because I do love Mon Prairie Couture and most Mon Prairie, um fragrances, but I guess I, I'm just not really drawn to the Black Opium line. Not as much as I really expected to be because given that it has coffee and all the other you know dark notes in there, but no, I'm not really drawn to Black Opium. And also another line from YSL, it's Lieb. So I'm not, again, I tried it. Everyone, I mean, like almost everyone loves um, the EDT and the EDP version and the intense version. And I really contemplated on adding it to my collection that I thought, you know what, I'm just going to wait on it. If the prices go down or if I see it in our discounter website, I'm going to add it to my collection. Um, I don't have anything against the scent. I really love the scent, but it was just like, it didn't really give me any butterflies in my stomach when I smelled it. It was like any other fragrance that I smell that I really like, but it wasn't for me, I guess. Good girl fragrances. So, again, these are just fragrances that everyone seems to be talking about. And Good Girl, the original one, was one of them last year. I did like Good Girl. It was like, mm, it's really nice. But it wasn't a fragrance that I was drawn to, again. Um, I thought it was the tuberose in the original Good Girl, but when I started to love tuberose and then when I really loved tuberose, I went back and smelled that and still there was something in the dry run. There's something in the DNA of the Good Girl fragrances that even the other flankers that I've tried, even Very Good Girl, that is something that I really, really liked. Um, the entrance, I love the entrance of Very Good Girl. But in the dry down of most good girl fragrances, there is something in that DNA or in that line. There's a DNA in that line that I'm not a fan of, so I do, that I don't really like. So um, beautiful bottles. I really want to add them to my collection. I want to own a shoe, but um, yeah, the scent doesn't really speak to me. So the next one is a celebrity fragrance, and it's Ariana Grande's REM. So I do love Cloud. I owned Ari. I owned both of them. I emptied them, and I'm gonna be repurchasing them. Not now. Um, I do love Moonlight as well. Um, that scent I did give to my sister-in-law, and other fragrances that I've tried. Sweet Like Candy. I really liked it. And Thank You Next is also a very nice fragrance. It's actually one of the fragrances that I really want to add to my collection. But um, REM, there was something in that. It was. It's a nice fragrance. It's lavender. It has a masculine feel to it and it's creamy i still get the coconut i've tried it several times me really wanting to add it to my collection as i said and the bottle is really beautiful as well and um knowing that i don't currently have anything from ariana grande i really wanted to try rem but there's something in that scent that i don't know like it's just one of those fragrances that's really nice and even though i was like on a lavender kick at that point I wasn't really feeling it. So um, Ariana Grande's REM, very beautiful bottle. I love the scent, but just for some reasons, like there's something lacking or again, just me not having a connection with a fragrance. Just like that instant attraction to a fragrance that's missing. It just doesn't have that um, spark, as I said. So the next one, any Britney Spears fragrances. Um, I did own Fantasy, I own Rainbow Fantasy. I want to try Midnight Fantasy. 
and um, another one. And there's also a newer one that I tried. I really liked it. It's the one in the pink glitter bottle. It's the newer one, I think. But I just don't feel like adding any Britney Spears um, fragrances to my collection. I really love her. I mean, I'm forever a fan of Britney Spears. But um, I just don't know. Like, I did smell Britney Spears Fantasy and I was really tempted to add it again or buy a 30ml to my collection because I smelled it on someone else and it just smelled beautiful, sweet, really smelled like that wild chocolate cupcake. But um, yeah, just lacking in performance. Maybe I haven't tried or found the right fantasy or the right Britney Spears fragrance for me, but for now, I'm not really that drawn into the Britney Spears fragrances line. Um, anything from Paco Rabanne Olympia. So I did declutter Olympia, the original one, because I felt like that fragrance wasn't me. It's a really nice fragrance. It's something to dry down that bothered me, and it was too strong of a fragrance that it was just wearing me and not the other way around. So I do own Olympia Aqua. I really like it. But all the other Olympia line that's very similar to the DNA of the EDP, I'm not going to be adding to my collection. And I won't even try to bother smelling it or testing them or whatever. I was at once interested in trying the intense version and another flanker, but I was like, you know what? No. If it, it will have that same feel or DNA with the original Olympia or the EDP, then I'm not going to be adding it to my collection. Olympia Blossom, on the other hand, is really nice, but something in the dry down in that one, I didn't like. So it reminded me too much of the original, even though they're, they're very different scents. Olympia Blossom is just the same as how Poison Girl EDP was for me. So I really love the opening. They had that very creamy, like orangey, sweet opening, but something in the dry down, uh, I didn't like. So yeah, anything from Olympia and anything from Gucci Bloom. <laughs> Gucci Bloom is a fragrance that, oh my God, I, mm, I was traumatized when I first smelled that fragrance. I tested it because everyone was talking about it um karina waldron talked about it and i was like oh my god i need to smell that one and i did it's it smelled like it smelled so diff it was a very traumatizing experience because i it smelled like pee it smelled like something very pungent very like something i didn't like so it was disgusting and I was like, maybe it was just, you know, the perfume and the nozzle because sometimes it does happen. So I did try it several times after that experience because I was then, you know, a fan of tuberose. I was like, you know what? I'm going to go back to Gucci Bloom because that one is a tuberose fragrance. Um, I did spray it on my hand. It was a nice tuberose fragrance. I didn't get that pea-like smell, but, you know, that experience just kind of like stuck to me. So I wasn't really that excited to try it and you know it's a nice fragrance it's a very classy elegant you know tuberous fragrance but um i don't know like because of that experience i don't want to add it to my collection and even as much as you really want to try the other flankers one in the yellow bottle and the red bottle i bet they smell great just like the original but because of that experience i won't be adding it to my collection um i know it's very childish you know to to not buy fragrance just because of a first experience first impressions are just first impressions and even love at first sniff fragrances can be you know like a fragrance that you end up not loving in the long run so i do have those in my collection as well so um but yeah I, I don't know like i'm just very like adamant with that you know like no i'm not gonna be adding that to my collection um mango skin by wilhelm perfumery so i don't know if i'll be putting this video up first or my house review or my review of the samples that i have from wilhelm perfumery but mango skin I'm just very disappointed in that fragrance because I didn't get any mango. Um, of course, it's called Mango Skin. I would be expecting more mango skin and just the idea of a mango. But with how people described it as, you know, the juiciest mango fragrance you'll ever own or it's like very juicy, ripe yellow mango. I mean, the first time I tried it, I was like, there's no mango. And the several times I tried it, I did get the mango. Yes, I kind of understood that some people like Kim, she mentioned that it was 
more like a green mango and mango skin than like a ripe yellow Sometimes mango. Sometimes we are just too stuck in trying to describe a fragrance just based on the name or like like a single fragrance note or a, a specific accord that we forget to mention that it's not just a fruity fragrance. Mango skin is not just a fruity mango. It's not even a ripe mango. Like I'm from the Philippines. I compared to Philippine mangoes and um, it's not even close. It's not just a fruity fragrance. It's not just a mango fragrance. It's a musky white floral with a strong bitter base and it's not just a ripe mango so it's just that's how i experience it so mango skin as much as i really wanted to add it to my collection i almost blind bought it but i'm happy that i decided to sample it first because that one will not it was a scrubber for me for sure um side effect from initial parfums um it's just like this it's very similar with mango skin where people describe side effect as a boozy fragrance like a boozy tobacco like sweet fragrance i didn't get any of that i did get the tobacco but it was side effect for me is mainly a strong dry spicy fragrance than it is how other or most people describe the fragrance so it was just a case of me not getting what i expected from the fragrance and those were the very reasons why i wanted to add them to my collection so um yeah initial side effect i'm not going to be adding to my collection um I mean, it's very expensive as well. So it's 210 euros for a 19 mil, I think 210 or something like that. Um, it's really beyond my budget, but if I really like a scent so much, I'm gonna save up for it. Like there's some, there's a fragrance from Inisho that I really like, but this one, you know, like I'm happy that I that I sampled it first. So um, from BDK, Rouge Smoking, everyone loved that fragrance. Like last year, it was just like all over YouTube. Like everyone loved it. Um, not just Rouge Smoking, um, Gris Chernal as well. I think it was just a case of, you know, like everyone loving a fragrance so much because like a certain person or like a group of people talked about it and were like, oh my god. I mean, they're really nice fragrances, don't get me wrong, but they're just not the kind of fragrances that I want to add to my collection. Even Rouge Smoking, it's a beautiful vanilla tonka bean and cherry, but for the price that it goes for and the performance that it got from it, I know I only had a sample, but you do get to wear your sample and use up a sample and have several wears with the fragrance or with the sample. But um, yeah, not really that satisfied with it. Like there are other cherry fragrances that I would rather buy with a very similar scent profile to Rouge Smoking. Um, cherry Punk by um, Room 1015, for example, that's a nice option. I mean, I'm considering getting a bottle of that. Um, it gives the smoking to Rouge Smoking that wasn't in Rouge Smoking. So yeah, um, Grey Chanel, I, I, maybe because I wasn't really a big fan of Fig before, so I didn't really get the hype. Like everyone was like, oh my God, it's beautiful and sexy. It is a nice fragrance, but you know, not the kind of fragrance for me. And now that I'm trying other Fig fragrances, I revisited Grey Chanel, um, but still I'm not really, you know, I, I, I don't get it. So yeah, it's nice, but not for me. Um, other reasons why I won't be adding perfumes to my perfume collection, I did write um, because it's mostly just the price of perfumes. Um, because I have this like, I want to live a lifestyle, a very minimalistic, simple lifestyle, but it doesn't jive with this passion and, you know, being on YouTube and try buying perfumes and having a perfume collection because like me every time i do a haul it just feels wrong in a way like i really love it i love trying the fragrances and owning them and excited to try or have experiences with the fragrances but given how minimalistic i am in other areas of my life and you know with the kind of lifestyle that i want to live in the future it doesn't really um go hand in hand so every time i buy a fragrance that's beyond like 180 euros like going to 200 i just feel so pretentious i'm like do you really love it that much but as i said like if i really love a fragrance i will save up fragrances, for, it. for example that belong to that category i mean bakra rouge 540 um that scent profile i really love but because of that you know price that it goes for i mean i could buy it with the 35 mil but it's a different story with that um, fragrance in particular because I know I can get that scent profile from the other fragrances that I own. It's good, for example, for Mason Francis Kirkjean um, fragrances because you have the option of buying like a 1.7 ounce or like a smaller bottle. You don't really have to get the big one. But um, yeah, like that's also one thing that I, I'm so disappointed with or like it's my pet peeve 
when houses just sell 100 ml bottles. I mean, understandable, maybe in the business point of view. I mean, for example, Acro fragrances, their fragrances are really out there and adventurous. So if I were the house or if I were the perfumer, the owner of the house, I wouldn't sell 30 ml or 50 ml of those or even travels because I mean, owning travels or 30 ml of those fragrances, the entire set would be enough for you because given how different and unique those fragrances are, owning 100 ml of all of those would not make sense. Not unless, of course, you have the money for it or you are a perfume collector or you are, you know, like a different level of perfume enthusiast and understandable. But, you know, on a like marketing point of view, it's understandable why they would just have a sample and a bottle. Um, again, I don't know any of the logistics of creating perfumes and owning a business like that, but, um, yeah, I do hope most houses do offer like smaller bottle options, especially for the pricier ones, but you know, not everyone does that. So, um, again, when it comes to fragrances that are, um, expensive, it just, I just feels wrong. It just feels like I'm doing something wrong every time I, I, I do a haul in general, or every time I buy a niche or an indie fragrance that's just above the budget that I really told myself that I'm not gonna go over that specific budget. Like I told myself that last year. So um, I don't know, like that's why right now, I even though I could buy the fragrances in my wish list, and e even though they belong to that, um, lower or mid-range category for example Sonne Jordan, Parlemois, and um, Imaginary Authors, those uh, Ununoma, those are currently fragrance houses that I'm loving. Room 1015 currently is added to that list but um, even though they belong to the low or mid-range category when it comes to niche and indie um, houses or perfumes, I just feel like you know like right now I'm just trying to sit down and just think and not just apply the seven day rule but apply like the how many days or months rule to really wait and try the fragrance or maybe use up my samples. So if I miss the samples or smelling the fragrance that I crave for it, then it really just shows that I really want to add that to my collection because I have this tendency of buying a lot of discovery sets, trying it, smelling it, loving it, three days, four days afterwards, I end up buying a full bottle and I still have full sample vials. So my thought process before was, you know what, it's okay, I have the full bottle here, so when I travel, I just bring the samples with me, which makes sense. Right now, I'm not really itching on buying all the fragrances that I fell in love because of the samples that I got, you know, Morning Chess by Wilhelm from Perfumery is also one fragrance that I really want to add a full bottle of, even just a 30 ml, um, Ooh La La by Theo Cabanel, or I also want to blind buy Cafe um, Cabanel as well. It's just me trying to not really spend that much on fragrances right now not unless i really really want to add it to my collection because knowing that i do have a lot of bottles i have more than 120 i'm between 120 140 or something like that um i do have fragrances that i love but i do have a lot of fragrances in there that i'm like i could live without you know so um yeah before i add more perfumes to my collection i'm just gonna have to edit down my current perfume collection. So um, before I end today's video, I just wanted to talk about fragrances or houses that I really want to try now that I already talked about fragrances and fragrance houses that I'm not really drawn to. Um, I really want to get, I still have some fragrances from my wish list. So I do have, I think I put up two wish list videos. Um, yeah, two, I think, or three. I still have those fragrances in my wish list. Um, I just added a lot of other fragrances but houses that i really want to try that unfortunately don't ship here so if you guys can uh, you know like tell me or point me to a website that does with the exception of twisted lily and lucky scent so um i haven't tried twisted lily but lucky scent i really wanted to try the fragrances there they have a lot of samples and discovery sets and fragrances that i wanted to buy but you know shipping fee is crazy and i've heard that you know in other countries customs and um other fees are crazy as well knowing how it is in this country i'm not gonna risk it so anyway fragrance houses that i really want to try Fran francesca bianchi i don't know why but when i do ch try to check out when i purchase the discovery set they don't ship here so iceland is one of the countries listed in the countries that they ship to but when i try to check out it, it I, I can't go through. So Francesca Bianchi and also Hiram Green, I think it's the same, if I'm not mistaken. Like, I think, 
I still cannot check out like when I try to check out they they don't go through so I'm not sure if it's the the full bottle or the samples but you know it wouldn't make sense so yeah Hiram Green is also another house I really wanted to try um Navidus Perfums, they have sales. I really want to buy some fragrances from that house, but you know, they don't ship to Iceland. And Frederick Mall, and again, another house that you want to purchase a discovery set from. Other houses that do ship here that I want to try, but I'm, I still can't decide like which fragrances I'm gonna start with. Um, Sucre Bell, Alchemia, Solsi Scents. I think those are houses that's like more me. So that is it for today's video. Thank you for sharing a big chunk of your day and watching today's video. Um, it really means a lot. Every single view, every single like, and every single comment that you guys put out, it really means a lot to me. So thank you so much. Have fun, much love, stay safe, and see you in the next one.